Midgard is big. As a matter of fact, it is huge, it is gargantuan, it is titanic in size. And not only in sheer size, but in content, in places to go and in people to meet and adventures to be had. So it can be very daunting for new game masters and experienced game masters to know where to play and how to play in this amazingly well-built campaign setting by Cobalt Press. So that is why I'm starting a new video series. Welcome to the Rough Guide to Midgard. Hi there fellow role players and game masters, my name is Mr. Tarask and this is still your go-to YouTube channel for everything Cobalt Press. There's not a single book in their collection that I do not own and most of them I have reviewed on my channel. And if you want to see me continue do that, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and comment with what you want to see me talk about. Because this video series, The Rough Guide to Midgard, is going to be a video series from me to you. I will start off in the first few videos by talking about a little bit about the superficial stuff, the surface stuff of the Midgard campaign setting, but I want to go way deeper into the lore and into the political systems, into the dungeons and everything that is really deep written in those big fat tomes you probably bought for yourself and you haven't read entirely. So that is why I'm here. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I am really grateful if you do hit the thumbs up and comment. So I will talk about three things in this video and the first one uh, being uh, what is Midgard, how it is kind of set up and what it actually is and what it actually means to me and why I play in Midgard. The second thing is the free city of Zobek and the crossroads, uh, why they are called that and why that is for me still the number one place to start playing in uh, the Midgard campaign setting and even if you've been playing in the Midgard campaign setting for a while, you should start. You should play in and around Sobek uh, for a while at least, because the sheer amount of content available for that area is just so freaking big. The third thing I want to talk about is one piece of lore that I always tell to my players when we start playing in uh, the Midgard campaign setting that I just think is super interesting to tell them and just builds the world from the get go and builds like this type of dangerous thing from the get go and. Uh, I will talk about that as the third thing in this video. So let's get to it. I will just use a little bit of magic by doing this. And here I am. This is the Midgard world map. Well, to be perfectly honest, this is the Midgard world map. As you can see, it is gargantuan. It is big. It is huge. If you've ever bought one of these Midgard world books for 5th edition or the older, which doesn't have this logo, but it is kind of the same book, almost like 90% the same book, it probably came with one of these fold-out maps about, uh, from the Midgard uh, campaign setting, which is a cool map to put on, uh, for your players on the table, but uh, it doesn't hold the entire setting it does hold the most important parts especially from the get-go for me which is the center there's part of the north right here um and there is a part of uh the south on there i something like this uh uh that is shown on the map on the physical map but as you can see, this is Midgard. And the first thing that I noticed when glancing on to uh, upon the Midgard campaign setting, Europe, right? It resembles Europe. And that is not a bad thing. That's actually a very good thing. It resembles Europe. And I think they did that on purpose. It's almost impossible not to say they did that on purpose. Uh, there is the center. There is this kind of Spain, France, Belgium, Netherlands thing going on. There's even like this thing, which could resemble Italy, but way bigger. Um, there is a part of like the top of Africa. And right here, this part where they have this channel between like Africa and Spain in the real world. It is even a build like that and then these things resemble for me like Norway and Sweden and everything and they kind of that's I think that's the strong point for Midgard at this point because they were able to create a world that have a lot of features, that has a lot of features that are really, um, that people already know about the real world. If you've ever opened a real world map, if you looked at a, a real world globe the way it is right now, um, there is the north. And if you go to the north in Midgard, to Sweden, Euro, uh, Sweden, uh, Finland, what is that, all that, uh, uh, Norway, you will encounter more um, Viking-esque settings with Norse gods and everything in the campaign setting in the uh, uh, Cobalt Press Midgard campaign setting. In the middle, there's more like this typical uh, uh, knights 
and and fights kind of thing going on sword and sorcery uh from the european um history thing going on but of course in a fantasy section and then right here is what they call the southlands they actually did a kickstarter on that so although there's an entire section of the southlands in the midgard world book at this point um there is uh an entire campaign setting for the Southlands coming. And I am, I am super excited for that. The Southlands is a campaign setting that I'm super excited. It is actually a campaign setting within a campaign setting because the campaign setting is Midgard, but Southlands just expands on it, has their own adventures. And you go, of course, more into like the Morocco, I don't know, uh, Egypt, Turkey kind of vibes when you go uh, to the uh, south of the Midgard campaign setting, which I think is really great. And it's really, it's, it's just something that you can recognize. It's recognizable, right? And that's really good, especially for new players. If you want to introduce new players to this world, make sure to mention that kind of stuff so they kind of know in a fantasy way what to expect. I want to really quickly do a shout out to the tool I'm using right now, which is a free online tool for the Midgard map. A lot of people don't know it exists but it is a thing and it's really really handy this is free to use for everybody with an internet connection and a computer and it's actually just the map of Midgard that you can zoom into and it has all the locations but it is kind of interactive in a way if you've been reading your book and you saw a location I don't know you saw a location uh, let's say Zobek because we're going to Zobek you type in Zobek right here, you click it, and boom, there's Zobek. You know where it is. If you've been... Oh, where is that Scarlet Citadel thing? Where is that? I don't know where it is. Oh, that's right here. Okay, cool. You can just type it in, and you can find it on your map, and then show it to your players on the physical map on your table, or in your... Um, in your virtual tabletop now there's another tool right here just quick shout out for this tool free to use for everything if you can like press something like uh capitals or whatever you can see all the capitals you can uh, see even a version of the map with political boundaries which are, it's really cool to have if you're into that stuff and i will be going into that stuff um later in this video series so i will be using this tool a heck of a lot i really love it shout out to the people who created it the names are right here Map design, uh, Midgard trademark, or cartography, Midgard world by Anna Meyer. If that's correct, Meyer, Meyer, is that the correct way to pronounce it? Really, kudos to you guys, uh, everybody who worked on this really cool tool. Now, what I want to talk about, number two, is where to go when playing in the Midgard campaign setting. Basically, you can go anywhere, and there's adventures to be had anywhere. This book counts, I don't know, 450-esque pages, and all of these sections, I mean the Southlands, the Crossroads, the North, the East, everything is covered in this book, and there's a lot of stuff. But why am I such a big advocate for playing in and around Zobek? As you can see, Zobek is smack in the middle of the Midgard campaign setting. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like literally the middle of the Midgard campaign setting. As you can see, they call it the crossroads because there is a lot of roads, there are a lot of roads uh, going in and, uh, and out of Zobek and there's even a river going in and out of Zobek. So you can already see that uh, there's a lot of action to be had and it must be a super important town a super important city because like all of the trading routes go through there all of the ships that go from uh, one side of the world to the other side of the world they have to go through Zobek so Zobek is a very important town also as you can see uh, the Scarlet Citadel is quite close by Margrave Forest if you know if you've recognized it from a review it's very close by and there's other stuff that is very that is uh, very close by if I then uh, this is wrong this is not what I meant to do if I go right here to the um, uh, Zobek city map now this is just a quick shout out to Char tabletop this is the tabletop I use to play my games uh, at this point a virtual tabletop the best and easiest to use I have two reviews of it on my channel one for the players one for the dungeon master make sure to check those out I offer you 20% discount on your subscription with Char tabletop so make sure to click the link in the description below and create a free free account fiddle with it fiddle around with it right so check it out see if it's for you and then get yourself a 20% um, discount on your subscription to Char tabletop super cool uh, tabletop you should check out make sure to check out my review 
This is Zobek. This is the free city of Zobek. And as you can see, it is a city. It is. It has upper Zobek, market district. It has a dog district, merchant district, a gear district. Super interesting. Just a little bit of uh, information about that. There is a district that has like all the clock working and gear forge type of stuff from Midgard. Um, it's all happening in the gear district. If you gear forge are actually like a race kind of in Midgard where they are it's like steampunk. Midgard has some steampunk stuff to it. For me Midgard has always been especially Zobek has always been a campaign setting right in between the Forgotten Realms and Aberon where Aberon is quite steampunky. If that's the correct term, I don't know if that's the correct term to describe it, but I'm using it right now. It's quite steampunky. And then there is the uh, Forgotten Realms, which is quite fantasy type. And this is smack in the middle. It's a fantasy setting with some steampunk um, uh, stuff thrown in there. I really love it. Uh, so the Gear Forge, if you're ever playing a Gear Forge, the Gear District is something you should read up on in the Midgard World Book. Another uh, great part about this town is the Kobold Ghetto, which is literally a ghetto uh, fully built and with small houses. And it's full of, of like, it's a ghetto. It's a poor district. And it, the the kobolds live there, right? So they have their own, they even have their own, uh, they call it the water gate, but it's like more like a bridge, wooden type bridge that goes over the water. And it's kind of their own city within the city. They even have an underground and everything. Now, why am I such a big advocate for playing in and around Zobek? Now, first of all, there is the sheer amount of content available by Cobalt Press. For example, these are just a few examples. There is the Streets of Zobek, which is a, an entire section, uh, an entire module, uh, which I haven't reviewed, but it is it is in existence and a lot of people love it. I do not love it as much as, as some people, but uh, it's an entire book on Zobek. What to do, who to talk to, uh, adventure hooks, there's maps in here, there's all kinds of stuff in here. There's also the Midgard Sagas, which is a book uh, full of one-shots, small, short adventures uh, in and around Zobek. Really uh, uh, important, that last part, it is around Zobek, is a lot of stuff going on. And even like a book like Tales of the Old Margrave, like I showed you in the uh, map, on the map, the Midgard map, the Margrave forest is actually super close to Zobek. So the Tales of the Old Margrave, my absolute favorite book, not my favorite book by Cobalt Press, just my favorite book. This is my favorite adventure book. It is a magical forest that your players can go into. The forest has a mind of its own, it has a lot of adventures in there. This is my, if you ask me what is your favorite book on your shelf, Tales of the Old Margrave is my favorite book on my shelf. There is so much content and there's even more. As you can see behind me, I have these Warlock Grimoires. There is an entire section in one of the Warlock Grimoires that talks about the sewer system uh, of the Zobek uh, town where the Red Folk and other creatures live and they have like their own uh, shops, they have their own politics, they have their own city below the city, kind of under city type thing going on and they can pop their heads out of the sewers every now and then, steal something and bring it down to their own city. Uh, it's an entire section in the uh, Warlock Grimoire and there's more books uh, that talk about um, like there's in the player the player books the Midgard Heroes Handbook there's even sections on Zobek and maybe some of the races that live in and around Zobek it's super interesting to uh, play in and around Zobek now um, another thing I want to talk about and this is actually number three no first I want to talk about as you can see, really clearly, there's a, uh, a road coming from the east, from the north, and there's a road going uh, west. So that's why they call this the crossroads. There is a small little road going uh, south, but that leads into the Kobold Ghetto, and that's just not a place you want to always, every day, go, because the, the Kobolds are kind of a folk that belong to themselves and just be who they are, right? So um, but so there is a south road if you want to enter through the south road. Now, there is also uh, two rivers, like one channel more going through the city and one big river, just the city is built against this big river. They have this dot dog district right there. And that is why the city is so important. And it's really cool to use the city as like a safe point or a point to get your adventures um, because everything 
is in this city. And by that I mean if your players are looking for healing potions, they're probably be able to get them in the city. If they're looking for a good smith uh, uh, to build a sword or a shield or whatever, uh, it is probably available in Zobek. If they're looking for rations or they want to go eat some good fish or a good steak or they want to go to the big library that is in Zobek because Zobek has one of those gigantic libra libraries, one of the most important libraries in the Midgard campaign setting. It is in Zobek. If you want, if you are gear forged and you want to get like I don't know, new gears for your legs or whatever, you go to the gear district. It is in Zobak. It is in Zobak. And you as a dungeon master can really utilize Zobak as a town to give your players what they need in order to move on to their adventure. Also, there's a lot of a lot of adventure north, east, and a west to be had of Zobak. So your players can really go to one place. For example, my players went to the Margrave and then they had to go west of Zobak. So they had to travel through Zobak to get to the other side, which is good because they rested up in Zobak and got more uh, supplies in Zobak and everything. Um, got some more role playing, lighthearted role playing in. So this town is really set in a very good place in the Midgard campaign setting. Now, another piece of lore I want to quickly talk about is a piece of lore which is uh, on page 48 of the Midgard hero, sorry, the Midgard uh, handbook and it is called, sorry, it's not page 48, it's page 50, Dwarven Trolls. That's a section, it's a small section in the um and the big ass world book, like the picture you see right here is the world book. I have the entire book in Shard Tabletop, by the way, so you can show this stuff to your players. Um, 10 years under the mountain. And this is always something, if we start playing in uh, the Midgard world, I always just go to this place. I show them this is so back. These mountains here hold a bunch of dwarven clans. And there is this one clan called the Iron Crags, which is a clan that does really does something really special. Every now and then, and nobody really knows why. It could be yearly, it could be every five years, it could be every uh, ten years. They come down and they raid villages, they raid places, and they even raided Zobek every now and then and, and other big places. And they take as many hostages as they can. The way I play it out is if you do not resist, they won't kill you. If you resist, they will kill you. If you not resist and you are good enough for them, they will take you and they will take you to their uh, mine, to their to their stronghold. And you won't be able to escape. You might be able to escape if you really want to, but normally you wouldn't be able to escape. And you will spend 10 years on, under the mountain. And this is something they say, like people who've been to Vietnam, um, thank you for your service, first of all, but... Um, if you've been to Vietnam, people are always saying, I've been to Vietnam. That's a thing people say. I've been in, in I've been to Iraq. I've been I've been in the army, I've been to Iraq. That's a thing. They're proud of that. They have been through some really hard times. And um, this is kind of that thing in a fantasy section where you've been under the mountain for 10 years and you could go into an inn in Zobek, uh, a tavern and there would, could be somebody sitting there. So I'm not just like, there could be like a ranger or whatever, just sitting in a corner and he's just like, I'm not taking your shit. I've been under the mountain for 10 years. And everybody knows what that means. And everybody respects that because after 10 years, if you survived, first of all, you've been working your ass off for the dwarves picking jams, building tunnels, doing all of that work. If you survive 10 years, which is not a long time for a dwarf, but a long time for a human, you are just freed. You can go back to your family. Uh, if your wife didn't leave you yet, you can go back to your wife, your children or whatever, and you can just have your life the way you were having it before. That is what this dwarven clan does. And I think that's really cool because you have this safe city of Zobak, the free city of Zobak, and your players are like, oh, we have this city and everything's cool and everything's fun. There's a library, there's inns, there's shops, there's markets, there's everything. If I can, if I want an orange, I can get an orange. If I want an apple, I can get an apple because Zobak has everything. But then there is, you talk about this thing 
that just exists. You don't need to use it in your game per se, but it exists and it gives your players like, oh, there's there's stuff going on around Sobek already. Um, we need to be careful not to get caught and spend 10 years under the mountain. Or you could have a character, you could build a character that just, that either spent 10 years under the mountain or escaped. Maybe they escaped after five years and they are now a fugitive and dwarves are now actually after them to get uh, them to kill them because they escaped. It's that kind of lore that I always tell my players before we start playing in Midgard. So that was actually my first uh, quite easy going um, Ver episode of uh, the rough guide to uh, Midgard where I just wanted to talk about what Midgard is why you should play in and around Sobek why you should start in and around Sobek um, if you want to play in a magical forest you can very close to Sobek if you want to play in a mountain setting you can very close to Sobek if you want to go to a really really cool dungeon crawling uh, adventure you can very close to Sobek everything you want to do every type of D&D game you want to play is actually playable very close to uh, the city of Sobek. There's more. There's, uh, For example, there is a, a book by Cobalt Press called 12 Peculiar Towers, which I've also reviewed on my channel. Uh, there are some towers that are talked about that are really close to a uh, Zobek. So that is why I think this is really important to start it off. If you want to see me talk about anything uh, from the Midgard campaign setting, any of the lore, any of the sections, any anything, anything you want, make sure to put that in the comments below because next episode I will be talking about another part of the world. And until then, bye bye